When it comes to weight loss, wouldn't it be great if there were some assurances that our efforts would pan out? I know for sure when I was 80 pounds overweight and unhealthy as all get up, that if a Latin was given our wishes, I would have used one of those wishes for a no-fail weight loss plan. Now, I am going to say something. Don't let it scare you. Stick around and you will get exactly what is best for you. I can't guarantee that you'll lose weight. I mean, I'm not living with you seeing what you're doing, but I can provide you with five strong indicators that your body and mind are ready to persevere the journey of weight loss. How does that sound? In an ideal world, having all five of these indicators in place would be great, but we live in reality. So aim for three out of five. Bill, it is important to understand that weight loss should be approached in a healthy and sustainable manner. That's what this channel was all about. With that being said, one of the first signs that we are ready to lose weight is, well, let me ask you, did you know that it can be detrimental to our mind and body and soul to be in weight loss mode year round? Yeah. It can't be. Being in a perpetual state of weight loss works against our hormones, mood, and metabolism, the very things we need for good weight loss. Taking planned breaks to eat slightly more food than what is required for weight loss is super crucial. More details of the hows and whys of all of that was shared in this conversation, but one of the takeaways I shared in that conversation was that spring and summertime are optimal times our bodies are ready to effortlessly release excess. That's not to say that we can't lose weight during the fall and winter, but our resolve, motivation, and discipline is more volatile during those seasons, fall and winter. Too much food-centric sleep-robbing activities are taking place during those times, much less so during the spring and the summertime. Once the weather starts to get nicer, the brightness and lightness of outside, let's be honest, we find ourselves overall being more active without actually thinking about it. It's, it just happens. And call it what you want, but I am more aware of not overeating during the spring and summertime because, you know, shorts and tank tops and just more of me is showing is revealed during that season. And spring and summertime food is naturally hydrating, light, and lower in calories, yet still filling. Initially, when I was not successful in my attempts to lose weight, because there's been more than one, I have been on this rodeo a time or three. Then there was this crystal ball type of moment that turned everything around, that put things into irrefutable perspective for me. Being a visual and auditory learner who, during my teen years, loved reading books where the author painted a picture so clear in detail, I felt like I was there living inside the story. So when my doctor outlined and painted a wonderful picture of what my life would look like, keeping in mind hereditary factors. If I continued on the path I was traveling, I started to pay attention. <laughs> but I moved from paying attention to engaging in action the day I was driving my, my beautiful sons to their piano lesson and I drifted off to sleep. Thank God no one was hurt. That excursion, that was the moment I woke up and decided to get my butt into gear. See, I was told that I wouldn't, I couldn't have kids. So when I was blessed twice, these boys, they became and they are my whole everything. And I would be darned if, one, I allow my lack of action to shorten their lifespan. Two, if I allow my lack of action to place them in a caretaker role because I didn't want to address avoidable health stuff. You know, having clarity or strong internal why, whatever you want to call it, having that is a really good indicator that we're ready, that we're ready for this journey of weight loss. The envy monster? Yeah. It rears its little head every time I see a video, magazine cover, or hear a claim that another person lost a ridiculous amount of weight in the time it takes me to drive to Walmart, which is literally a mile and a half away. And I'm over here doing all the things and the scale is giving me you're down a pound or you've lost half an inch. After throwing myself a pity party, I had to come to grips with the fact that my goals, my expectations of myself, of my body, of the process, all were unrealistic and unsustainable. And setting goals such as drinking 10 glasses of water for a minimum of five days each week, during three days of full body workouts like this one weekly, or increasing my fiber intake by five grams until I reach 30 grams in total, these are the types of realistic long-term sustainable goals to have 
you're on a weight loss journey. Once I started setting goals that recognize that I am a real human person with real responsibilities, the journey stopped being frustrating and disappointing. So let me ask you, are you setting yourself up for success or failure? I would encourage you to write down your goals and what you are hoping to accomplish and acquire during this weight loss process. Then evaluate if what you have written down is actually conducive at this time. Based on all of the moving parts in your life, are some of the goals things that you would be willing to do in phases? For example, instead of having a goal of losing 30 pounds in a month, could you adjust your goal making it 30 pounds in three to six months? And during that time, target one or two smaller processes within that goal. When my health had reached rock bottom, losing weight would have been nice, but its importance dropped down the list. What rose to the top for me was how to fuel my body so that it would stop shutting down on me. My brain was not in a place. It wasn't healthy enough to do the actions that would lead to healthy weight loss. Learning about and incorporating nutritional pieces, that became my top goal during that time. And even that I had to do in small phases, baby steps. This, this here, this probably was my biggest stumbling block. So I had quickly figured out how to create workout plans and meal plans to get the needle moving. I had followed them easily up until I allowed comparison thinking. She's thinner than me. Take over. Then I let life interruptions put a kink in my plan. I fell victim to letting hard days be my reason for eating way too much. I veered off plan, the plan I created, mind you, at the simplest life hiccups. I wasn't consistent because I did not have emotional readiness nor a plan for inevitable setbacks. This right here, emotional readiness and being prepared for setbacks is a top tier indicator of our readiness to not only start a weight loss journey, but to continue on, to see it to its completion, where those habits and actions become lifestyle. Perfect segue into the next indicator that we are ready for a successful weight loss journey. If we were in our 20s and 30s, I would say that we have more wiggle room with what and how we can eat. Our 40s and my 50-ish metabolism is singing a whole nother song, not note, song. When I was able to wrap my head around and acknowledge that to do this weight loss journey, this weight loss thing the right way that I was going to have to have a basic understanding of nutrition and willingness to make choices to support what I said I wanted. If I had to list an order of priority about how to go about doing this, I suppose understanding the power and application of portion control, that would be first. And I got you covered here. Next on that list would be learning how to make mindful decisions about what to eat, which wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be once I understood that food is comprised of three, no, four macronutrients, protein, carbohydrates, fat, and fiber. You can increase your confidence in your ability to eat for your goals with the tips in the video playlist that I made for you here. So eat well, stay active.